matter with you two? You're acting very... odd. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 iconic scenes written differently in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Even in the wizarding world, hearing voices isn't a good sign. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the memorable moments from the second Harry Potter film that were originally written quite differently by J.K. Rowling herself. We of course know and expect there have to be some changes made between the novels and the movies, but which of these scenes did you think the films improved, and which were better as they were in the books? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Dursleys' Dinner Party As if spending summer with the Dursleys wasn't already bad enough, Harry starts the second film having to suffer them hosting a dinner party, with Vernon hoping to secure a big business deal. It's not exactly ideal for Harry then, when Dobby, the house elf, turns up in his bedroom just as Harry is trying his best to go unnoticed. Who are you? Dobby, sir. This all plays out in the films and books, but with some small changes. Most notably, Petunia's dessert never actually gets dropped onto her guest's head in the books. Instead, the dessert goes splat in the kitchen. And it's the sudden arrival of a barn owl in the books that finally ends the party in chaos. It's my nephew. He's very disturbed. Meeting strangers upsets him. Number 9. Arthur versus Lucius As magical families go, you'd be hard-pressed to find two that are less alike than the Weasleys and the Malfoys. By book two, Harry already knows this, of course, having befriended Ron in year one and made enemies with Draco. Oh, look, Potter. You've got yourself a girlfriend. Now, Draco, play nicely. But towards the beginning of Chamber of Secrets, it's the fathers that take centre stage, during a tense standoff in Diagon Alley at the bookstore Flourish and Blots. The scene in the book goes just a little bit further, however, with Arthur and Lucius actually coming to blows for a full on fist fight. And I thought your family could sink no lower. And Molly Weasley is most unimpressed by the whole thing, especially as it all happens in front of Gilderoy Lockhart. Number 8 Explaining the Chamber of Secrets. Now, the general history of the Chamber of Secrets is pretty much the same from book to film. Salazar Slytherin, the heir of Slytherin, a hidden part of the castle, it's all there in both. But the big difference comes in how the students learn the backstory, or rather who they learn it from. Professor, I was wondering if you could tell us about the Chamber of Secrets. In the films, it's Professor McGonagall who provides the details. But in the books, it's Professor Binns, the history of magic teacher who also happens to be a ghost. Old Bin's classes are rarely described as anything other than extremely boring, however, so perhaps it's not difficult to see why the character was ultimately cut from the movies. Naturally, the school has been searched many times. No such chamber has been found. Number 7. The Rogue Bludger As Harry learns, almost to his cost, having Dobby the house elf try to save your life isn't always a good thing. In this famous scene, we see Harry's Quidditch game thrown into chaos when a rogue bludger singles Harry out. Blimey! Harry's got himself a rogue bludger! Thankfully, Harry does manage to grab the snitch, but not before serious injury, made even worse by Lockhart's interfering. There are a couple of changes from the book, though. Most notably, in the book, the bludger doesn't continue ruthlessly attacking Harry once the game's ended, and Hermione never has to step in to literally save his life. Thank you. Are you okay? No, I think my, I think my heart's broken. Number 6. The Mud Blood Aftermath The setup of this scene is slightly changed for the film, with the book specifically foreshadowing Ron's backfiring spell during a previous chapter. However, once Malfoy uses the Muggleborn slur against Hermione and Ron tries to defend her, the outcome's the same, with Ron spewing slugs. <laughs> it's afterwards, in Hagrid's hut, where the movies veer off from the books again. Call me a mudblood. He did not. What's a mudblood? It means dirty blood. In the films, Hermione understands the insult and emotionally explains it to Harry. 
But in the books, it's Hagrid and a very queasy Ron who do the explaining, with Hermione unaware until that point of what mudblood means. It's disgusting. Number 5. Aragog In terms of iconic creatures in the Harry Potter series, few can rival Aragog. And you? You're Aragog, aren't you? A king of the Arachnids, loved by Hagrid, and living in the Forbidden Forest, his general backstory doesn't change much from the book to film, but you do get more details on the page. As J.K. Rowling originally wrote it, the Aragog scene doesn't come literally straight after Hagrid's taken by Fudge to Azkaban, as it does in the film. You heard what Hagrid said. Follow the spiders. Head <laughs> into the dark forest. Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? The scene also reveals that the giant spider once had a giant spider wife too, called Mosag. In both book and film though, Ron is totally terrified, and it's all thanks to the flying Ford Anglia that the pair just about escape. Number 4. Meeting Moaning Myrtle She's a major player in the Chamber of Secrets saga, but her intro is very different in the books compared to the films. Who's Moaning Myrtle? I'm Moaning Myrtle! In the films, a none the wiser Harry and Ron meet Myrtle when they and Hermione start brewing Polyjuice Potion in the one place no one else will find it, Moaning Myrtle's bathroom. But in the books, Myrtle's first appearance comes during a scene that the films totally skipped over, Nearly Headless Nick's death day party. There's Nearly Headless Nick. Hello, Percy. While there, Harry, Ron and Hermione get introduced to Myrtle by the poltergeist Peeves too, who was also eventually cut from the movies, despite comic actor Rick Mile having filmed as the character. <laughs> Number 3. The Sword Out of the Hat Towards the climax of the movie, in the Chamber of Secrets, when all seems lost and Tom Riddle appears to have won, Harry pulls something spectacular out of the sorting hat. The Sword of Godric Gryffindor. It proves a pivotal moment in the film, and in the book as well, except for one small, though visually significant, change. Originally, in the books, Harry actually puts the sorting hat on and asks for help. At that point, Rowling writes that something very hard and heavy thudded onto the top of Harry's head, almost knocking him out. The sword, then, doesn't just appear for Harry, but it awkwardly smashes into his skull, all while the basilisk tries to kill him. Number 2. In Dumbledore's Office This famous scene at the end helps to explain so many of the story's finer details, but in the book it's quite a different scenario. That you both receive special awards for services to the school. First, it all takes place in Professor McGonagall's office, not Dumbledore's. Also, in the book, McGonagall's there for most of it, as are Ron, Ginny, Arthur and Molly Weasley, plus a freshly confused Lockhart. Hello. Who are you? It was actually this way in the film's original screenplay too, but not in the final cut. In the book, it's still Dumbledore and Harry only discussing Harry's anxieties about which house he should be in, but there are so many more voices in this final scene, full of relief, as Rowling originally wrote it. You want proof why you belong in Gryffindor? Then I suggest you look more closely at this. Number 1. Dobby's Freedom and Hagrid's Return Okay, so Dobby's freedom with the hidden sock plays out almost exactly the same in the film as it does in the books, but the scene in the movie seems to set itself apart in one instance, when Lucius appears to be on the verge of performing a Vada Kedavra, which definitely doesn't happen in the book. On a lighter note though, the movie makes much more of Hagrid's return to Hogwarts from Azkaban. Sorry I'm late. In the books, it's listed as just one of the many reasons why Harry enjoys the last Hogwarts feast of the year more than usual. But in the film, Hagrid's return triggers a standing ovation right at the movie's close. Do 
you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.